began the night of our January school play. Not my self-consciousness, but my story of overcoming it. We had a party on stage after the play. Oh, I wasn't in the cast. Not me. I was on the stage crew. Because, but I'll tell you about that later. The point is, somebody grabbed a spotlight and started a sort of game. When the light stopped on you, you'd have to get up and make a speech. Jack sure did all right, but why not? He was the star of the play. That sort of thing was easy for him. Of course, I wanted to do well, too. I wanted to, to shine. I started planning what I was going to say. I'd wow him. And then it happened. There I was, in, in the spotlight. And I felt uncomfortable. And, and awkward. And different. And they were all watching me. And, and laughing. At what? At me? Well, what was I doing wrong? Did I look funny? Uh, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. I... I guess I'll just shut up and sit down. <laughs> it was terrible. I knew it. Hey, that was neat, Marty, but don't be so self-conscious about it. Self-conscious. That was my trouble. That was why I felt so queer. And I begin to remember other times I'd had the same feeling. I remembered giving a book report in class. It was exactly the same. Yes, as if there were a spotlight on me, and everybody was watching me. Oh, I managed to get through my report all right, but I was miserable. And then I remembered the first time I asked June for a date. I knew just what I wanted to say, but when it came right down to it... Yeah, I felt spotlighted again. And the words didn't want to come out. And she was staring at... Was my face broken out again? And I remembered coming to try out for this play. Boy, I really wanted a part. I felt sure I could get one, too, until... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to try out. Uh, uh, I'd like to work on a stage crew. The stage crew. Well, it was fun. But it wasn't what I wanted. Yeah, the night of the party, Jack said it, and I knew he was right. Self-conscious. I felt I could never get up in front of the class or ask a girl for a date, or do anything in public again. Yeah, I was a self-conscious guy. I couldn't even stay out the party. Oh, hi, Marty. Oh, hi, Jack. Okay. Say, what happened to you last night? Uh, I didn't feel so good. Oh, too bad. Boy, wasn't that something when they had that spotlight on us? Gee, I was so scared, my knees were knocking. I could hardly talk. You? You were self-conscious? Sure, I guess everybody is sometimes. Everybody? I guess that's right. Say, listen, I've got to get to class. Sure hope you're feeling better. All right, so long. So long. Everybody. Everybody's self-conscious. After that, I began to notice other people. Bill, for example. He always seems relaxed and comfortable. But a couple of years back, I can remember what a self-conscious guy he was. He really has overcome it. Then there's Anne. She likes to play for people. Watching her, I remembered two or three years ago and how terribly self-conscious she was if anyone watched her play. She certainly has changed. Well, you can get over being self-conscious. The question is, how? It wasn't long after, 
when I made a big discovery about how to overcome self-consciousness. I was helping Jack with his ping pong game. He hadn't been playing very long, but he was learning and doing right well. Then Hank and Bill came in and hung around watching. And suddenly it seemed as though Jack was feeling on the spot. He started fumbling and then he quit. Now, what made Jack suddenly feel self-conscious? Was it because he didn't play well? I wasn't self-conscious about ping-pong. Why the difference? And then, well, I had to talk to Jack. I have an idea about self-consciousness. Everybody wants to show up really well. You want people to think you're pretty good. But then you start thinking about yourself, how everybody's watching you, what you must look like to them. And then you make a mess of it. Sometimes. But usually you don't. You just think you do. But look, if, if you can do something really well, then you're more confident. Self-consciousness doesn't bother you quite so much. If I could do more things well... You gonna try out for the class play in April? I guess so. Me too. Only this time I'm really gonna try out. Swell. All right. Marty Hanson? Hello, Marty. Are you going to help us out on the stage crew again this time? Well, thanks. But I... This time I really want a part in the play. Why, that's fine. Why don't you go ahead and read some lines for me? When I am in trouble, eating is the only thing that consoles me. Indeed, when I am in really great trouble, as anyone who knows me and... Boy, I really had to fight self-consciousness then. But I knew that was the only way I'd ever be good enough. You know, I got a part. I practiced a lot. I figured it was like the ping-pong deal. If I could become skillful, I wouldn't be so scared of it. It was easy alone. And finally, I got so it wasn't too hard with my family. I'd forget about myself and just think about doing it well. At rehearsal with the other kids, I could try another idea. Turning the spotlight onto someone else. Thinking about other people and telling myself I wasn't so important. And it worked part of the time. But when it came my turn to speak, then where could I turn the spotlight? While we're stopped, let me remind you all of something. You know, as we go through these themes, you should try to keep the whole situation in mind. Because you know, after all, what other people are thinking and doing is just as important as what you're doing. Will you take those lines again? Keep the whole situation in mind. There was an idea. Would it work? At the present moment, I'm eating muffins. Because I'm unhappy. Besides, I am particularly fond of muffins. <laughs> well, my cheek them. They were laughing. But now I knew they were laughing at the situation, not at me. Yes, it really helps to develop skills so I can concentrate on what I'm doing instead of how I'm doing it. It helps to think of other people and remember that I'm not so important. And it helps to turn that spotlight on the whole situation then I can almost forget to be self-conscious. Almost is right. I'm getting closer now, because I'm getting more and more practice in turning the spotlight onto the situation as a whole. It helps in class, too. When I feel self-conscious, I remember that the class isn't interested in me, but in what I have to say. Well, there it is. I still feel a little self-conscious at times. But by concentrating on others, by doing my best to make the whole situation easier, I overcome my own self-consciousness. It helps me enjoy being with people. And I think it helps people enjoy being with me. It could help you, too, couldn't it?